So now that we've familiarized ourselves with the concepts of recursion, as well as implemented a tree node, we can start taking a look at how we can actually implement a BST or binary search tree in Python. I'm going to start by showing how to insert values into a tree, as well as how to traverse the tree in order, which means to get the values from the tree in sorted order from smallest to largest. Um, and in turn, we'll be able to have a good solid foundation to be able to add values to a tree, as well as see the values in the tree, so we can implement some of the more complex functions. Before we start to write any sort of code, what I want to do is I want to refresh the idea of what a binary search tree is and demonstrate through like drawing how to actually insert values into the tree. Once we've done that, you should have a really good foundation to be able to start writing the code. And that will give you a really good solid understanding before we start just like writing recursive code and uh, trying to explain it through there. So to start, of course, we talked about the fact that in a tree, we have a root, right? And I sort of alluded to the fact that in a binary tree or binary search tree, everything to the left of the root are values that are less than the root and all the values to the right of the root are values that are greater than the root. Now you'll notice that I, um, I exempt the fact that like equals, right? We actually don't allow for duplicate values inside of trees. So this is another thing to keep in mind. If a value is equal to the root or equal to anything inside of the tree, we don't insert it. We only deal with values that are less than or greater than, right? We don't want any duplicate values because there's no point in storing duplicate values inside of a tree since it's mostly used for looking up values or searching for values. Uh, we don't need to deal with duplicates. So I think there may be trees that deal with duplicate values, but for binary search trees, we definitely exclude them. So understanding that, let me write out a list of values here and let's see how we would insert them into a tree. So we'll say 10, 5, 15, let's say uh, 7, 4, 20, and 13. Okay, so we're going to insert each of these values into the tree and we'll walk through sort of the steps that are taken in order to do that. So step one, we start with the value 10. And you'll notice there's nothing in the tree right now, of course. So what happens is the first value that's inserted, which is 10, becomes the root. So 10 is currently the root of the tree. So for every other insert, we're going to compare to the root value. So the next value that we try to insert is 5. Now, of course, 5 is less than 10, which means that 5 will go to the left of 10. One key thing to keep in mind is that since there's nothing to the left of 10 right now, we don't have to do any more comparisons. We just check and we see, well, 10 is the root. Does anything exist to the left of it? Nope. Well, then we just put 5 there because it's less than 10 and there's nothing else there, right? Similar sort of concept for 15. 15 is greater than 10. There's nothing currently to the right of 10, which means that we can just place 15 there and we're done. So this is the very simple part of the insert. Um, when we start getting more values aside from just the left and right, things get a little bit more complicated, right? So seven is the next value that we want to insert. Seven is of course less than 10, but you'll see that that leads us to the node five. So from here, we have to do another comparison and say, well, is seven less than or greater than five? Seven is of course greater than five, which means it will go to the right of five. So you can see here that we continue doing comparisons until we reach a point where the right or left doesn't have a value. And that is where we insert our node, right? Once we're done all of our comparisons, we get to the end and we update that end value to be the value that we're trying to insert. So keep that in mind because that's gonna be sort of like the premise of our insert code. The next value that we insert is four. Four goes to the left of 10 because it's less than 10. It's also less than five, which means that it goes to the left of five. And then 20, 20 is greater than 10. It's also greater than 15. So it goes to the right of 15. And then 13, of course, it's greater than 10, but less than 15. So you'll see it will go right here to the left of it. And this is our tree completed. So you can see how that general flow of insert actually works. And now from here, we can start to implement our code in Python. So let's go ahead and implement this exact logic inside of Python. And let's see what that looks like. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new Python file and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it linked BST. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to first start off by importing our tree node. So we're going to import our tree node and then we're going to create our class, which I'm going to call linked BST. 
And our initialization for this class is simply just going to be to initialize our root to be nothing. So we start off with just our root node, and that's the only thing that we keep track of, kind of like how with a stack we keep track of the top. Now, one question you may ask is what about size? Um, trees have an equivalent idea known as height, which is how far down the tree actually goes. And this is something that you can implement. However, I'm going to stray away from it right now and just demonstrate how to implement a basic binary search tree. I don't want to complicate it at all because on its own, a search tree or a tree in general is a fairly complex topic. I want you to understand the basis of what a tree is. And then after that, you can start doing fancy things with it. So for now, we're just going to go bare bones and deal with something that's very easy to understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our insert function. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do an insert function, and there's a lot of different philosophies on how it should look. The way that I prefer to do it is using two functions. The first function is going to be the one that the user actually accesses. They are going to provide a value to it. And what this function is going to do is it's just going to serve to call the recursive function. I separate out the recursive function from the actual function that the user calls because it makes the calls actually easier to track and makes them easier to look at and understand. And in turn, it makes the code a little bit cleaner. So um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's my preferred method for doing it. So it's what I'm going to show. So we have two functions, right? So we have our insert, and then I'm gonna create another one called insert aux. Aux is short for auxiliary. And this is where all of the actual logic is going to happen. It's going to take in a node to start at, as well as the value that the user wants to insert. So what happens is in this insert function that the user calls, we are going to set the root equal to the result of our recursive function. And we're gonna provide this recursive function the root value that is currently present in our tree, as well as the value that the user is trying to insert. And that's all our insert function is going to do. Our auxiliary function is going to do the actual logic of our code, which is going to be like the recursive calls. So first off, the very first thing that you should check is you should say, is the node that was provided currently none? This will cover our basis for if the root has nothing in it. So if the root has nothing in it, then we know that this node can just be set equal to a new tree node with the value provided by the user, and there'll be nothing to the left of it, and there'll be nothing to the right of it. So you can think of this sort of as like the base case. So if the node is none, then we just create a new node and uh, place it there. So what this does is it covers, it covers a few different situations. The first is on the first insert, the root will be none, right? So on the first insert, we'll see that the root is none. So then we just set the root equal to the value that's provided, right? Because you can see like self.root is set equal to this. Um, in the end, what we're going to do here, just to sort of fill this in, is we're going to return node. So on the base insert, what happens here is we set the root equal to the result of this function. Uh, if there is no root currently, well, what will happen is this would be none. So we set it equal to the value that was inserted and then return that value back to the user. So essentially it just updates the root to be the value. Now as well, what this does is when we traverse through the tree, you remember that I was saying we continue to compare until like the left or right is nothing. So once we reach a point where the left and right is nothing, we'll also hit this condition where the node is none. And in turn, what we do is we update that left or right to be equal to the value that's being inserted. So those are the sort of situations what this case will cover. So then the next case that we're going to say is if the value that's being inserted is less than what is currently at the current node, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the left of that node equal to a recursive call to this function and that recursive call is going to use the left-hand side of the node, and the value remains the same. So in doing this, I'm going to walk through what this is going to look like. So just sort of like bear with me right now. Um, there's one other call that's going to exist, which is going to be um, if the invalid is greater than node.getValue. And that will be, we're going to do essentially the opposite. We're going to set, sorry, we're going to set the right equal to the result of the recursive calls with the right hand side of the tree as well as the value. 
so let me explain what's happening here. Let's, let's, let's follow through with our same example that we had before. Um, so when we have the first value, which is the root, right? We immediately come into here and we realize that the node is none and we return back that value, right? Once we have a node, what we do is we look at the value to the left to determine if it's not, if it's like less than or greater than, right? So um, for instance, if we're inserting a value less than the root, right? This is gonna go through this call here, which is going to set the left-hand side equal to a recursive call to this function with the left. So if we just have the root and nothing to the left of it, the get left is going to be none, which again puts us into this situation here, right? Where we set the left-hand side. So in order to really understand this, let's just step through an example. I've got this main function set up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out the, uh, the inner traversal here because we don't have that yet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place a breakpoint here. We're just gonna step through it and see what is happening. So let's go ahead and debug. So the very first value that gets inserted is 10, right? And what happens is with 10, the node is currently none because the root has nothing in it, right? So all we simply do here is we update the root to be equal to the value that was inserted. So this creates a new node, right? And then we come down here and return that. So now the root is equal to that value that we inserted, right? So we update the root and then we move forward. So you'll see when we try to insert five, right? Right now we have a root value and that root value is the 10 that we just inserted. So what happens is we come into this function and we check, is the node equal to none? So node is currently the root, right? Which isn't none, it has a value of 10. So this condition is not the one that we go through. What we do instead is we check if the value is less than the node's value. So the node's value, if you recall, is 10, right? So we're looking at this node, its value is 10. The value that we're trying to insert is five. So of course five is less than 10, which means that we go into this recursive call, right? This recursive call is going to set the left-hand side of the root equal to the result of this recursive call. So you'll see when we go through this recursive call, it gets the left-hand side of the root, which is currently none, and it checks if it is none, which it is, right? So since it is none, we update that value on the left-hand side to be equal to the value that was provided by the user. And then we return that. So what happens is this node that we have was the root, right? And we set its left-hand side equal to the result of that recursive call. And the result of that recursive call was a new node with the user's value that was trying to be inserted. So in turn, we update the left to be that value. And then we proceed on to the next insert. It's similar sort of idea with the right. So hopefully that's pretty easy to follow through on now as you step through it. And I encourage you to try debugging and just stepping through it just to see what the calls actually look like because in turn, that's gonna give you a really good understanding of what is actually happening there. But just um, breaking down even the recursion based on function calls, similar to what we did with the Fibonacci sequence numbers is gonna be another valuable asset to be able to understand exactly what the recursion looks like. Basically just you have to think of every single time we have a value that's less than the current node we just go to the left-hand side and check to see if it has something that's less than or greater than our current value. And anytime we encounter something that's none, we insert the value. Otherwise, we continue comparing until we get to that point, right? So that's really the core concept of the insert. So understanding the insert here, there's one other function that I want to implement for you, which is the in-order traversal of the tree, which will allow you to see the contents of the tree. An in-order traversal is going to show the values in order of like lowest to highest. What this means is that we're going to go down to the leftmost value. The leftmost value is always the smallest value in the tree. So we're going to get to this value and then we're going to print it. So that'd be four. And then what happens is we come up one level and we print that value, right? So then, and then we go to the right and we print the value that's to the right. And then we continue traversing through the tree. So the next one is 10. And then we go all the way to the left to get 13. So this one here, and then we have 15, and then we have 20. So that's sort of like the order of traversal that we're going to be looking at. This function is actually significantly more straightforward than the insert function. 
it's going to follow a similar sort of philosophy of having a normal function as well as an auxiliary function. So I'm going to create a function called in order, which is only going to serve to call the in order auxiliary function that we create with the root of the tree. So we're going to have in order underscore aux, which takes in its node that it wants to start at. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially go until the root is not none. So if the root is not none, what we're going to do is we're going to call this function recursively with the left hand side, right? So we're going to get the left hand side and call it recursively. And then we're going to print the value that we got. And then we're going to call the function recursively with the right hand side. And that will be all that we're going to do. So what this is doing is it, it continually goes down the left hand side of the tree until it reaches something that is none. Once it reaches something that is none, it stops and then it prints out the values. So if you want to take a look at this through the actual diagram, what this is doing is, so it's going down the left hand side of the tree until it reaches four, right? If we continue to go to the left here, we get nothing, right? So then it prints out that value. And then what it does is it goes to the next value that is to the left, which is five, and then prints that value. And then in turn, it will go to the right after that and print the remaining value. So that's the idea of the in order traversal, right? It prints everything to the left and then it prints everything to the right. Since everything to the left is gonna be smaller than everything to the right. And in turn, what this gives us is, I'll show you here, we'll comment this back out. So you can see, I'm just inserting those values from the list that we talked about in our whiteboard example. And then I'm gonna print an in-order traversal. And what this should in turn do, um, saying that it has no attribute in order. Oh, I spelled order wrong. That would be why. So what this will in turn do is it will print out all the values in order. So you can see that these results are in sorted order. So this is the idea of an in order traversal. There are other types of traversals that we'll talk about, but this is one of the main ones that's typically used. So this should hopefully give you a really solid foundation on trees. You should now know how to insert values as well as print out the contents of the tree in order. And then in future videos, we'll take a look at retrieving values as well as deleting values and some of the other types of traversals. But this gives you the base that you'll be able to build all of your foundations off of.